Joining us now to talk more about this, Fred Kemp is president and CEO of the Atlantic Council, and John Kilduff is founding partner at Again Capital. Both are CNBC contributors. Welcome, guys. And, John, thank you for being here. I'll start with you. Pleasure. Uh, what do we know about how bad these shortages are for consumers? Rationing of, of when they can cook and that kind of thing? Well, it's pretty bad, but it's partly a self-inflicted wound, Kelly, in that it's a, it's a market structure that I think only a, pl a planned economy could achieve uh, because the basically your local municipality buys the gas on the open market or is forced to buy the gas on the open market at whatever the heck price it is. And uh, China locked in some very expensive gas uh, in the aftermath of the Ukraine war, mm. like everybody else was scrambling for supplies. But the local uh, government has a cap on what they can charge retailers. Hmm. So that's a really bad combo when you got to pay extraordinarily high market prices for gas and then sell it at retail at way below the price you bought it at. So they don't have the money to subsidize it, basically. So they're shutting off re uh, consumers at their homes, for the most part, in the dead of night. Oh, and, and they have not been lucky as we have in Europe has in terms of warm weather. The polar vortex has set up shop uh, in that part of the world. Can you imagine, Fred, I mean, turning off the gas in the middle of the night, the heat, the heat basically. The, um, so how do you expect the contours of this conflict to play out? Well, the, I think everything John just said is correct. Uh, I don't think that this is, this is going to be as big of a problem, anywhere near as big of a problem for President Xi as was his zero COVID policy. Part of the reason for that is this is taking place in the North. Uh, it is a problem, as he talked about, with uh, local governments. Uh, which lacked the funds to put in place to buy supplies because of all the money they were paying uh, for their zero COVID policies. Uh, you, you can already see that the government is trying to deflect the blame onto the local governments. And to a certain, sec uh, 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 a certain degree, I think they can do that. I think they'll get away with that. Hmm. What, that th what it does do, though, is another chink in the armor of President Xi. So President Xi was seen as infallible ahead of the zero COVID policy, and now he's dealing with slowing growth. He's got property uh, difficulties. He's isolated himself from many European countries by backing uh, Russia. So it's really getting in the way of his corrective actions following last year's party congress when he got his unprecedented third term. And we've benefited from the fact, John, that you know natural gas prices have been pretty low. I mean, it's a, such a, a bifurcated market now, it's hard to, to sort of use a global proxy. But would you say that they only have room to go higher from here? Or will, will China be all right? Because, like you said, they locked in at high prices and maybe they can reset at a little bit lower ones. Well, I mean, they're, they're stuck for this year uh, and they're going to be stuck for the rest of this winter for sure. I mean, they, they, they've locked and loaded. You know, it's uh, it's like anything when you buy it and store it and, and pay, you know, tr uh, double digits for it. It's, it's going to be that expensive in storage until you use it. Um, the issue, though, is that, you know, here in the U.S., we are certainly at the lower band now of prices. Uh, this is historically where they've been. Again, the weather increased production that's been coming online has certainly helped to engineer that. And the lower oil prices, a lot of times um, now Natural gas is priced basis on an index to oil. So with the oil price coming down, that should help China for next year. But I think a lot of lessons are, are going to be learned around the world here that this, the, the, the sky is falling narrative uh, for parts of the energy market rarely come true. It always, John, uh, Fred, feels a little bit pointless to talk about all the pressure on Xi Jinping because it feels kind of fatalistic. Like, well, I, I, how, I, if something's got to give, I, I, what? how is there something to give? And it, yes, we've seen protests. Yes, we've seen white paper demonstrations. You know, yes, we've seen signs of unrest, but it just feels like the regime has done such a good job of marshalling technology and all the rest of it uh, to, to try to retain power, no matter how dissatisfied the public might be. Uh, Kelly, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, one thing he achieved at his party congress is he has loyalists all around him. He really got rid of anyone who would not be a loyalist. So he's got a lot of political room for maneuver. Um, Rhodium Group, which works with us at the Atlantic Council on doing economic forecasting for China, they think the real growth uh, in 2023 is only going to be 0.5% economic growth for that size of a country. That's that's politically dangerous. Now, they could get it up to 4 or 4.5%, which is what the Chinese government says it will do, but they can only do that through a real large-scale investment program that could have inflationary aspects to it. So, uh, so uh, she has got some very difficult decisions to make, and he abandoned the zero uh, COVID policy because because it wasn't working. Right, and he may uh, abandon some of his economic policies and put more reforms in place, uh, give tech companies again a little bit more freedom. 
uh, as he recognizes that he needs more economic growth uh, sustained by the, the economy itself. And quick final comment, John, as we've seen crude commodities, those prices bid up on this idea of China coming back in and having uh, a lot more demand. Do you think that's gotten ahead of itself? I do. I do. I, I'm, I'm less worried about the impact on commodities generally from the China reopening than, than a lot of other folks. Um, it's, it, it, there'll be some revenge travel for sure, worried about the jet fuel market to a degree. But beyond that, uh, I don't see a huge impact from it. It's like Stephen Roach said, Fred, your comments remind me of his a little bit when he said he's more worried about China than he has been in 25 years, basically, of, of being an observer there. Guys, we'll leave it there for now. Thanks for your time today. John Kilduff and Fred Kemp.